Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Tracker here on City TV. Today, we have two uh, wonderful personalities to speak to on the show. First up is Ghana's biggest football agent or licensed FIFA intermediary. Well, these days, there are a lot more intermediaries in the system, but legend says that he's still the biggest fish in the ocean. So we'll be getting to know him a bit more, where his journey has started from, what he's up to these days, and perhaps what his future plans are for his uh, football agency. We'll take a quick break here on the tracker. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest and then we'll get today's conversation on the road. Welcome back here to the Tracker on City TV. My guest is seated. Um, he is the founder, if I should say, um, of Arthur Legacy. They are a licensed FIFA intermediary agency. Oliver Arthur is my guest on the show today. Oliver, welcome to the Tracker. Thank you. Um, I've heard a lot about you. I've, I've seen the, the evidence of your hard work. Um, but before we even get into all that, let's, let's start from the bottom. Let's start from the very beginning. Just briefly tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of where you were born, where you did your, your schooling and stuff like that before we even get into all the football, football stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's been a long time since I talked about yeah. um, um, this. Okay, so um, I'm a DC boy. I was born in Dansoma. Okay. Um, I, I did a little bit of football. Um, I play coach with Dansoma United. Ah. Okay, so... What position was that? Yeah, I was a winger. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so... Um, and then I... I, I schooled um, Suhum Sektek. Okay. Um, I'm a Sutez Khan. And then I, I did also Accra Academy for SES form. So... Oh. I'm, I'm a blow. <laughs> um, and then also, um, I, I did, I chartered in transport, chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. So I worked with Alitalia, okay. the Italian airline, for almost five, six years. Um, and then through the Alitalia, I was doing football alongside gradually. And then through the airline, I got the very good contact with, the, um, with Italy. Okay. Because I was doing a lot of travels to Italy, and that is how it all started. Where mm. the and the agency came in just after the airline, and then I started. And because I had a very good um, contact in Italy, it it opened the way in Italy for me. Let's let me take you back a few steps. You said that while you were um, a young guy, before your time with the logistics and traveling chartered agency you did a little football tell me about what you mean by a little football <laughs> okay so i um like i said i played coach uh, national yeah. united weren't too wasn't even too active because of schooling okay. my, my dad would prefer me to yeah. go to school so but after after six form i was i was very close to liberty professional hmm. um i even at a point um Sly Tete and Mr. Hanso came together and gave me the academy to run to the Liberty Youth. Mm. I was the chairman of the Liberty Youth for just a very short um, period, but wow. because of How work. How old were you then? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was around in the 20s, 25, 26 wow. years. So I've, I've been in football, and, but not um, at the, in, in the limelight in the highest mm. level. But I, I love the game, so I was following a lot um, football. Um, from the ed at my early ages. Mm. W would you say at this time that you had already started conceiving your plans to become a licensed intermediary or at that time it was just basically going with what came to you and what was offered to you? Um, frankly speaking, I knew I wanted to do something in football. But it never occurred to me I wanted to be an agent. It had okay. nothing to do with agents. I thought about uh, management, being in net managing, and I think I would give um, a big shout out. I would, I would say a big thanks to the chairman of Bichem United, okay. Kingsley Usuacha. When I was 
just about leaving Alitalia, he said, uh, why not um, come along? Because I was with him in Dansuman over the years. Okay. 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 Um, Dansuman kept fit. He was, he was there with us all the time. So he said, oh, come, let's run Bichem United together. Bichem United were in the, in the third tier, in the third division. Mm -hmm. So I came in and he made me the chairman of Bichem United. Okay. So I helped Bichem United from the third division to second and then to the premiership. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we we're, were... Uh, myself with Rob Jamra and um, the kind be be a United, yes exactly and then Major and Roy Arthur they were all part of it that we we tried and they, um, helped uh, Bicham United into Premiership mm. so that is where it all started so I I became very active in football because I was the ch um, in charge of the CEO of Bicham United so okay. I was very active with it and that is how it all started because. Um, I was doing Bicham United, and I had a very good relation um, in, te, um, in the in the travel industry okay. because I have been in the travel industry for long. Whilst let me before I, I start the Bicham story, I go back to the travel. Whilst I was with Alitalia, I was in charge of um, taking House of Folk because House of Folk were playing in the Champions League in 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 Africa, but okay. they were yeah. playing in yeah. the um, what they call the Northern African My countries. Country. So I had to organize for them to go through Italy. Before oh. they go, I did with House of Folk, I did with um, Liberty Professional. So I took all those clubs to, to mm. and, and then um, when Ghana qualified for the World Cup, um, I think it's the 20, 2010 World Cup, yes, um, in Germany. Okay. I was involved really with sending a lot of people to Germany. Uh, Bamed, I did a lot with Bamed Travel and Tour. At that time, that I was very key in Alitalia. So yeah. I was trying to lure the football industry into flying with Alitalia. So I was doing the marketing in Alitalia, and that is when I, I got to know a lot of the football people mm, and also mm. was trying to open contacts in, in Italy for, for Bicham United. Um, I took Bicham United to three tournaments in Italy. Okay. At that time, we went to the um, uh, water, the Pope, um, the Pope tournament. It was tournament um, yeah. in uh, in honor of the Pope. Mm -hmm. We went to Gradisca tournament where Bichem won the tournament in Italy. Um, so we were, I took them for this tournament, and that was the beginning of um, this story we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. break Atalagazi coming up because that is when I realized the the importance of getting closer to the players and trying to helping them because when the players get out there and. Um, they meet agents out yeah. there, then it, it's difficult. So then that is when I started getting into it that I need to help these young players as they get to Europe. Let, let me just take you a few steps back, not too far back, but to your time at Alitalia. Now, you, you mentioned that you played a role where you basically handled travel for Ghanaian teams and such. Now, was this a role that was handed to you because you had already some prior experience in the football business? Or this was something you worked out yourself because you had interest that you knew would become beneficial in the future. That, that is a very good point. Um, when I got into Alitalia, I was in the marketing department. I was assigned the role of diploma, diplomatic missions, diplomats. And so those, those are the rules. So I was supposed to deal with all embassies, mm -hmm. all diplomatic missions, UNICEF, United Nations. So those are the That's organizations that were supposed to deal with. But, you know, my love for the game was there also. Okay. So I introduced the idea of bringing football teams or clubs. And my, my director at that time saw the, the opportunity there. Yeah. So I was given, there are times that... I'll go to work and then all we have to prepare is, okay, plan, and then you go and watch a game in Kumasi. You, you follow Kotoko, you follow How to Folk, you wow. follow. So I was following the clubs, you know, I was following the clubs a lot, uh, Liberty Professionals. So when they qualified for Africa, I created that niche where, because um, African travels are a bit difficult, you know, traveling from Ghana straight out. First, at that time, there were no airlines Direct that flights. were flying. So yeah. they always have to go through somewhere before. But when you're traveling through Africa, to the northern mm -hmm. part it was difficult mm -hmm. they were they had a lot of challenges so i created that thing where most of the clouds traveled through italy and then back and they loved it okay house of folk were happy about it liberty professional they all loved it because you're going to play in africa but you go through europe yeah you know so they loved it and a lot of it and i had to get transit visas for them and because i was dealing with the diplomatic mission i had a very good contact with the italian embassy we discussed it and so i opened that that door for the airline mm. and we did a lot of sports travel 
Brilliant. Let's now get into your entry into managing players. Now, you've mentioned, obviously, your foundations with Liberty, your foundations with um, Brecum Chelsea. Bechem 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 United. United. Bechem United, Bechem sorry. United. Your, your foundations with Bechem United. Now, how did it take off? For instance, I'm talking about you deciding that now you want to register as a licensed intermediary, you want to start a company. Tell, tell me about how that all started. Okay, so it, it all started when we... Um, like I mentioned, there were people like Rab Jamna, Roy Arthur, my, my junior brother, and Major. We, we came together, um, and then we, I was with Alitalia still, but we decided to do a game, Hearts versus Kotoko in Italy. Okay. This was something that we, we planned years back that we wanted to, but at the last minute, some issues happened that it didn't, it didn't um, finally materialize. Record, yeah. It didn't materialize. So, um, my interest in the game was growing, and then when I took Bichem to Italy for the tournament, yeah. um, we got players coming out of it, um, players like Boachi Adam, Efri Aqua. Okay. That is when those players came out. They were part of the tournament. Mm. So, and then, but I had a, a guy in Italy who was taking care of these players, an okay. agent, but okay. frankly speaking... It didn't go very well. I didn't like the way he was treating the boys, the way this was an the Italian. manager Italian, okay. yes. The management. It was it didn't go well how how we were expecting it. So frankly speaking, I I got in and I I started doing it alongside, but frankly speaking, it was very difficult. Because as you tried a to lot combine of your job. Yes, a lot of people see the agency job as a part time job. But frankly speaking, if you really want to do it to the level it is that a full -time we are, business. it is a full time business. So as I was going through, I um, at a point in Alitalia, I was Air Morocco came to Ghana, okay. and I was put by Air Morocco. So ah. I went, to, <laughs> I left Alitalia, and went to Air Morocco. But at the same time, the the football was was it, it was it was getting to another level. So mm -hmm. frankly speaking, I didn't stay long at Air Morocco. Mm. I think it was just six months with Air Morocco, okay. and I resigned, and I came fully into into football interesting interesting so now you've gone to tournaments in italy you've used sort of a sort of a decoy agent but you, you feel like the football business is coming thick and fast so you should get into it full time now who were your first breakthrough clients when you decided to go full time and how did the first years of venturing full time into the agency go okay so um for players i would say the first player that i moved out was um uh, Azantano Innocent. He was from Sunyani. He was half Ivorian, half Ghanaian. Okay. Uh, I took him to Udinese and um, oh, that didn't go very well. He, yeah, he, he got into the first team. He broke into the first team, but uh, it didn't go very well okay. with him. Okay. And also, I was involved with, since I was very close to with Liberty, helping with um, Kojoa Samoa, yeah. Asamoa Jan, Muntari, visits in going okay. to Italy. And so, I had a relation with them, all of them. I had some, some relation with all of them. So um, when, when, I, when I started, when that um, agent was handling the players, it mm -hmm. started with Boachi Adam, okay. Shepsa, Isaac Kofi, Duncan. You know, so all those players came So at this the, time, they were partly your players and partly exactly, his players. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, but later, when I realized the way he was going, I didn't really like it. I went into it fully, and then I had to take some of the players. So okay. Boachi Adam... Um, a free aqua they they came with me and then that is when i i started and then i i did my i did goffrey dancer okay. alone okay. and then i started with the young players from hmm. there now i noticed that a bulk of your players come from the bronga Hafu region uh -huh. the sunyani area for for for, for instance now when i interviewed bwati on this same show i asked him what it was about talent in that particular side of town because i noticed that a lot of Ghanaian talent actually comes from that side of town. Why? What, what, what's the secret in that area? And why did you decide to base your um, first batch of uh, clients from that side of, of, of the country? So I would say it, it came from my relation with Bichem United and also Ralph and Major were from that, okay. that area. Okay. So you okay. know um, a, a major chunk of the people that I was dealing with were from that area. So mm. it was easy to always go there because I was going regularly to Bichem 
twice in a week okay, okay so it, that is where it, it, it all started from okay so but then i also not that because i had a relation there or i had people there but i realized that there were a lot of talents there there were a lot of very good talents from, from that yeah. from that region you go see young boys playing you see a lot of talent in so. there so the concentrating what was from there and that is where but and frankly speaking it's gone very well for us because all my major clients are from, from, are from, are from that, the that sector. region and yeah, yeah. so that's that's hmm. how it's tell us about the the arthur legacy business model right so for anybody who's watching like you mentioned people think that being an agent or running an agency <laughs> is a part-time business where you can go and watch a player say you're his manager and try and sell him and make some money G give us a breakdown of how it starts so what do you do first in terms of getting into contact with a player and then how does it go until the player is eventually at the club where you want him to be okay so um i have first it starts with the scouting scouting team okay i have a scouting team headed by gideon Atto. okay okay and this team goes around the country everywhere in the country and they look for the the talent okay. but do you um, have an age limit Yes, so that is what I was going to talk about. That okay. Alpha Legacy has a model that is a little bit different from the normal agents who come in and they want the eighteen year old who is ready to go to Europe. Okay. Because if you're not eighteen you cannot you cannot go FIFA rules. Um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so but we have a different model where we take the young players okay. from the ages fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mm. Okay. We think that when you get the players from that age they are raw talents yeah and you are able to mold them into how you want them to go when they're a little bit older it's it's quite difficult so our scouts go around and pick these young players yeah. okay and we follow them from there um we we, we have rela discussions with the parents there are some that we put in schools there okay. are some that we put them in school because i also believe that even though they want to play football, it's important that you get the basics, in, you, you get the foundation. Yeah. So we put them in school. We had relays, discussions with the parents. We, we let them understand the model and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. every single player that we followed, at least you have to be in the agency for the next two, three years before you'll be ready to move. So there's a lot in the background. There's a lot of education. There's a lot of mm. training in the background. You go to school. I visit you in school. So I have players that are like kids that you have to visit in school like you know our parents visit us in school yeah. i go to sunyani i go to kuma and i visit these boys in wow. school and also Sounds like a lot of work a lot a lot a lot goes into it and um let me come in to recent times mm -hmm. we realized that okay um that that process because we are not a football club you always give them to clubs okay and then you follow but there are always some challenges. There are always okay. um, the difficulties. So recent times that um, a club popped up um, Euro Africa, and this club we realized they they are professional. The yeah. the things they do, you could see a lot of professionalism in what they do. So we we came and we we, we affiliated with the club. We 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 marketing their players for them. Mm -hmm. And when we see players that are also good, yeah. we give to this club and we follow up. We follow up from there. So. Uh, now the training, most of the training or most of the players that we move out are from this Euro Africa club because of the the, mm. the training they give them and how professional they are. Now you're, you're talking about the scouting process, um, developing the, the players till they are ready to go to Europe. What is it like when the player is ready to go to Europe? So do you, let's say, have, let's say, contact with maybe a sporting director from an Udinese or an AS Roma? You say. Okay, I have this boy that I'm bringing. Just, just walk us through that. Okay, a so there are there are two processes with that. Um, first, when the players we scout them, we put them in school, or you put them. So we prepare them till we feel that the boy is ready. Okay. The first. When you say ready, you mean not just football ready. No, just yeah, not just football. We don't look at only football. Okay. okay not just football ready, but uh, character development, understanding okay. what he wants to do as a footballer. So. Um, the first part is most of the time I bring scouts to Ghana okay. because there are some clubs that I have very good relation with. So I tell them, okay, I've prepared these players. I have like six, seven players mm -hmm. come and so have I put a them. Look at them yourself. Yes, I put them together and then I get other clubs to join and then they play like a mini tournament and then the scouts come in to pick the players. Okay, okay that is one aspect. And secondly, to 
there are some players that I see myself that I see the potential. I see that this boy it's special. Mm. So then I decide, okay, let me call AC Milan. Tell them I have this midfielder. And I have this player. I have yeah. that player. So, so it's, two, it's, it's two ways. Either the scouts come in down to select the player themselves yeah. or I decide put some particular players in clubs in Europe. Mm. Now, talking about, your, um, talking about players that have exceptional talent, talk to us about Felix Afinajan because he has taken the world by storm all of a sudden. Now, when I heard his story that he was playing in Ghana just a few months ago, I was shocked. Tell me about Felix's story. How did you come into contact with him? So, and how has he progressed this quickly? Okay, so Philip's story also, it's like one of the players that, 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 that we picked through our scouting. He was scouted first um, through the Milo games. Okay. And then the chief scout have to go and confirm on Because there are a lot of people who call us, they have players. Is he also from the Bronga half region? Yes, it's from <laughs> <laughs> It's from Winchi, Sunyane. You understand? Amazing. So, um, they saw this player mm -hmm. and the chief scout went there to watch him in the inter schools okay. in Sunyane Coronation Park and he called me and said, we've got that player. We've hmm. got a player hates hates you. So, I told them, okay, follow up, see the mom, go to the parents. So, they went to the mom, they had discussion with the mom and the mom said, um, he has to finish school. So, frankly speaking, we saw him early 2019, but we have to wait for him. What to was come. he at that time? JSS? No, SS. He was an SS at the SS, time. SS, yeah. So, Afinajan's story has been a bit quick, faster than the normal players that, that we go to, who we pick from JSS level that has yeah. to stay for three Is it because years. of his level of talent? Um, okay, yes. When we saw him, he was already getting SX3, so he was fin completing okay. school, so we had to yes, wait for him to finish. And the mom, we, we had that agreement with the mom, and then we decided to wait for him to finish school. Just after school, he joined the Euro Africa Academy. Okay. And he stayed in the academy for, okay. Um, immediately came to the academy, there was this COVID uh, problem. Yeah. So we had to. Um, and he, so I would say the total period of staying in the academy was around six months. Okay. So he stayed in the academy for six months. And there was a coach, a foreign coach, who came in to to train them during that period. Okay. And he said, Oliver, this boy, don't take him to any mid to lower table clubs in Europe. Hmm. He has to be in the top three, top four. So I had that in mind. He was very convinced about this player. So I had that in mind. So taking this boy out, most of the time, when I have a special player that I'm taking to Europe, okay. frankly speaking, I look at mid table down because most of the time we don't have the basics we don't have the experience we don't have because the boys are not trained they are not as refined as refined the, the big yes, clubs that they right the big clubs want. because the big club they wanted once he comes in he's he ready needs to be ready to it, go yeah so but so but the lower clubs where they don't pay a lot of money but they are also ready to develop the players mm. so then i had a challenge of going straight to the big club so yeah. i spoke to as roma i spoke to ac milan and then I added one mid-table because I wasn't too sure. So I did also Sassuolo. Mm. I took him to Roma first and Roma were interested. Just after a week. No, they're interested. This boy is interesting. Then I took him. I didn't end there. Yeah. I took him to AC Milan. Milan were also interested. But at that time, Milan were fighting to, to win the league. They really wanted to win the league. So they were not too um, concentrated on the young player. Yeah. So and then I took him to Sassuolo. They were, they were blown away. They really <laughs> wanted the player. So, but then it got to. So I had Sasula, I had Roma, yes, Roma. So it got to negotiation and who has good plans for the player or yeah. who has the development program for the player. And I think Roma were on, on top with it. And mm. Sasula also delayed with the uh, coming out with with the right figures. Yeah. So finally, the player had to go to Roma. So that is how Fina stories. Just. Quickly, I mean, just to finish a story on him, um, would you say he is the most talented player that you have had in your fold? And how good do you think this guy can be? Um, most talented, I would say no. I wouldn't. I can't. I can't put a figure that Fina is the most talented because I also have players. <laughs> Players in the five line coming up, yeah. and yeah, I mean, those I that have hit the limelight. If, if in if the I'm limelight, yeah. yeah, okay, you see, when 
Bwachi Adam um, was at the age of Afina. Yeah. Bwachi was, was at that level. Juventus at the time. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Bwachi played in Genoa. In his debut, Bwachi scored. Yeah. Okay. And um, Juventus came in straight for him. So Bwachi Adam from Genoa to Juventus to Atlanta, you know, helps us wallow to qualify. So yeah. Bwachi Adam was out there. Okay. So, um, you know, Afina had mm. just started. Um, I don't know where Afina will get to at the end of it. I don't know the level he will get to. I don't know. Um, his career, how it's going, is going mm -hmm. to all mm -hmm. to going to pan out. So, um, I think he's one of the best. But I wouldn't want to put a finger and say he is the best. He is one of the best. What what attribute about him stands out to you the most? Humility, and in, in, um, it's as a human being, I think he's very humble. So much believe in himself, so much believe in his talent. He has so much belief in I his saw talent. that when he scored that second goal. Yes, so much belief in yeah. his talent. You know, he's a boy that he's very humble, so it's not about somebody who brags. Okay, he's not going to brag that I, but you could also see that he believes that he can do it. He has so much belief. Um, I remember when he was on the bed for the first time that he didn't come in, mm -hmm. but I asked him, How was it? He said, it was the crowd in the stadium. It was, it was, it was just too much for me. I was, I was a bit, a little bit scared. I said, so, um, can you play when you get? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. When I get opportunity, I know I will deliver. So you could see. So I think humility and then that belief in himself. And mm -hmm. when he come to the field, I would see the speed and the power he has in his leg. He has a lot of power, and he's able to run and on the run still deliver. You would see from the goal he scored yep. against you, the second yep. goal, yep. with the speed and um, the ability to still strike the ball, that is the thing that is attributed. In terms of the, on the field, his power and the speed. In his school, he was running a 100 meter. Ah. So he has the speed and, and, his, and his day. What's your thoughts there? So uh, we are talking to football agents or FIFA licensed intermediaries, is what they are called these days. Oliver Arthur, uh, he's been telling us a bit about his journey. We'll take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll round up the discussion with Oliver Arthur. Don't go anywhere. Stay right here with us on The Tracker. Welcome back to The Tracker here on City TV. We are speaking to licensed FIFA intermediary Oliver Arthur. Oliver has been telling us a lot. Let's, let's, let's dig deeper. Oliver, <laughs> we, we saw a young man pop up for Sheriff Tiraspol against Real Madrid. And I believe that that was the first time a lot of Ghanaians were hearing about Edmond Addo. Um, we went back to his place in Gamashi, did some interviews and stuff like that, but it was clear that nobody knew which team Sheriff Tiraspol was. How, first of all, did you come across Edmond? And how did you go all the way to um, Moldova, of Moldova. all places, uh, <laughs> to find a team? Okay, so um, we found Edmond from... Uh, Mighty Cosmos, a coach team in okay. Ghana, like I told you from the beginning. We don't do the already established players, so it will be difficult to see me at House of Four Kotoko Games, <laughs> Liberty. No, we do the, the coach teams, the young players, the third division. Yeah. That's where we pick. And I think that there are a lot of talents there, yeah. okay? Yeah. But just that they need the development. That is what it's missing. So we got him from Mighty Cosmos. Um, after Gideon Atto brought okay. this player to my notice, I, I followed on the player, we discussed with them. And when he was, so we saw him at the age of 16, he stayed with us for one year, following him and let him go through our redeem for after a year, I took him to Italy. That is okay. our base. Okay. okay, so he had a trial with Atlanta, he had with Bologna, he had with Parma. They showed interest, but you know, the Italian system also is a bit difficult putting young players in the system because mm. there are limitations to it. Okay. They were int the interest was there, but they were not sure to use the space or not, you understand? So, unfortunately, Edmond did not get opportunity like Felix God. Okay. So I had to, okay, it didn't make it in Italy, which is first, first class league in Europe, so let me drop him down. So we went to Seneca in Slovakia. Okay. So that is where I put Edmond. And Edmond stayed in Seneca for two and a half years. Mm. He was doing very well in Seneca. So when it got to the time that we thought Edmond was ready, I had a lot of clubs coming in. I had a club from uh, Czech Republic. I had a club from France. Okay. And also Moldova came in. Ah. Sheriff, after a meeting with my, my team, one thing that we realized is Sheriff has 
advantage of a Champions League. This is a club that will be playing the Champions League. Mm -hmm. And we thought that Edmond has so much talent that he has to show to the world. He has to show at the bigger stage. So we took that decision of he going to Sheriff instead of other European clubs. Because mm -hmm. he had gone to Czech Republic. It would be just a normal player playing in the leagues. Yeah. But when he gets to Sheriff, it's different. So he played in Sheriff and a decision paid off. And Sheriff, he played very well in the Champions League. And that's when everybody got to know. But he had been in the system. He had been in our, in our program for two and a half years mm. before getting to Sheriff. I'm sure that if you look back on that decision now, you, you tell yourself that that was a very smart decision to yeah, make. Yeah, we, we're very proud of ourselves for that decision, frankly speaking, because it wasn't easy. Yeah, it wasn't an obvious decision. You it could easily have done it something else. It wasn't. And, and frankly speaking, if we had gone to the other countries, we would have, it would have paid more than going to, to, to Sheriff. But Sheriff was a decision because we believed in the player mm. and we knew that when he get a bigger stage, he would show it and, and it paid off for us. Tell us about what you are up to these days. Uh, we've spoken about Fena, we've spoken about Felix, uh, about Edmond. What's Arthur Legacy up to in terms of projects that are happening these days? Okay, so Arthur Legacy, after, I wouldn't say after because they are still playing. Okay. We, we, we realized that most of our, our key players were coming to the end of their career. Boachia, Dome, Fria, Kwa, you know, Isaac Kofi. Yeah. So we embarked on a, a project where we termed the five-year project that we're going to do to bring a lot of young players up, okay, to mm -hmm. replace these ones. Okay. And this time, the project was a little different because I realized that most of the boys did not um, live up to expectation or um, live up to their potential okay. because they missed a lot of little things in Europe. Mm. So what we did was we, I took a five-member team, took some from Ghana, okay. And already also some in Italy, and I put all of them in Italy, spread them across Italy and said, listen, I'm going to bring in a lot of young players to Italy okay. in this period and want you to follow them. So your job is to daily follow in these players. It's day by day, every day, what they need. Because when the youngest guys to get to Europe, the food, mm -hmm. the culture, the language, it is very difficult for them. The weather. It is very difficult for them. But when you have somebody by your side 24-7... You have a wingman for every player you have out there? Every player. No, wow. there, there's a group manager. So, for okay. example, okay. now, as of now speaking to you, we have about 18 young players in Italy. Oh. I know you say, wow, they're all coming now. <laughs> so, and these 18 players, we have five people following them. So everybody okay. has six, seven players okay. under them. And it's daily. They follow them. And some of these guys who I put in Italy to follow this are former players. Okay. Uh, Maxwell Minson, who played for House of Folk Liberty Professional, is one of these guys. Pakus in team. We have an older guy, James Annan. Th these are guys who understand the game. They follow football. So when you put them um, to follow this young player, yeah. they're able to go through it. And then, so, <laughs> Afina is being followed by Steven um, Ansan, who goes there regularly. Hmm. He stays with him. Christmas, maybe Afina is not coming back to Ghana. He stays with Stephen, and they go through it. And Stephen has lived in Italy for 15 years, so he knows everything. He understands the language, he understands the culture, he understands how the people behave. Mm. So at times, the boy goes to training, come back home, and he's complaining about, and these guys don't do this. He said, okay, listen, this is how the Europeans behave. This is, how, this is what they do. This is how they, you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a bit easier. And I think that this project or this strategy we're using is something that is really going to help the boys because... Those in, in, in the middle coming up now, yeah. okay, now they are very comfortable. They are always very comfortable. They don't miss home too much because there are times that even Ghanaian food is prepared and taken to them in camp. Yeah. They eat. So it is a project that we started that I think that it, the, all these players are going to come up very soon. By the time we're in our third year now, by the time we get to the fifth year, I'm sure... When we come here, we're not going to discuss only Afena yeah. and Edmond. Maybe we forget about them yeah. because there are a lot of the young players also coming out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how many players do you have under Arthur Legacy now? Arthur Legacy now, um, total, we are about 24. Wow. And 15 of these are very young players from 18 to f 15 to 18. And all these players from 15 to 18 are new guys that we don't know about hmm. that you don't know about that are coming up we have 
four players in Sassuolo. Yeah. Two of them plays in the national, the Italian national team. We have two players in Inter Milan. We have one in Parma. We have two in Hellas Verona. We have in Bologna. Wow. We have, so it's scattered around all Italy. And I'm very happy because they are going through the training, the talent system. They go into the training, and I know very soon, by the time they are 18, 19, we'll hear of them, and there will be the new Afina, there will be the new Edmonado mm. coming up. Two more questions before you go. Um, if you could give advice to Ghanaian clubs on how to make players better ready for the European markets, what would it be? I think that they shouldn't concentrate only on former players who have played, um, played before and they know the game, so they don't go through the coaching system because a lot of the third division, but now I think it's changing. Ghana, um, they're going through a lot of the lines. It's A, mm -hmm. the league has to be lined. Those are the things that we need. But also, there's difference between a coach who coaches the main team and yeah. the development coaches. That's what we don't have. I think that the most important thing is clubs should think about getting development coaches because the young players who need to be developed... Yeah. Okay, we don't have it there. Let me give you one example. I brought a coach in Ghana. Mm -hmm. We went to watch a Premier League game. There was a player somebody introduced in the Premier League. So I went to watch a Premier League game. So he was there, he had the list. And after the game started, after 15 minutes, he said, okay, Oliver, so we are here to watch only two players. And I said, why? He said, okay, the rest don't have the basics. Mm. So imagine a Premier League game, 22 players on the pitch. And he's talking about only two. And these two he talked about are very young, 16 and 17 year old. No, it was 17 and 18 year old. Okay. So these are the two that he sees potential. potential. Okay. But the rest, the older ones, don't have the basics. Yeah. So it means we're missing so much because there's the basic, we don't have the basics. Okay. So I think that if I would advise a Premier League cloud, say that the young players coming up, get them development coaches. Hmm. And let them develop them. Let them let them show them the basics. Let them show because a player at the age of 22, 23, you cannot teach him a lot. You cannot teach them a lot. That is why we don't have players from our Premier League mm -hmm. getting straight into big teams. Big teams in Europe. Because most of our players don't have the basics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but when we give the young players the basics, they are able to get to their player. Yeah. When you pick a player like Pate, I'm sure if I'd played to the age of 20, 21, he cannot get to Atletico. Yep. But because he went through, he went to Europe early and went through the training, Systems, got in the yeah. bed, go through the system, understand the system, he is able to get to a level of Atletico. So I think it's very important that we, learn, we, we give them the basics that they need. Mm. That is the advice I'll give to the Premier League clubs. It's been an enriching conversation with you, Oliver. Hopefully we can bring you to the studio some other time when you are not busy traveling around <laughs> with your guys. Appreciate the time and hopefully we can bring you back. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for the time also. Thank you. So you heard Oliver Arthur there, um, CEO, founder, Arthur Legacy, um, football marketing agency, sharing with us his story, his journey, and also the players that he manages. Like I said, we'll be looking to bring him back into the studio some other time because this is our business on the tracker, keeping an eye on Ghanaian players abroad. So um, there'll be definitely more to talk about as far as his players are concerned on the show. Stay with us here on the tracker. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.